So Paul, thanks to some physicists, we now have some great devices, these digital cameras, car charge couple devices, allow us to see some of these fainter things. And now we're 92, we're already at two, so clearly there's more. And once people discovered there were more and they were within range of these devices, people started looking and finding more. It also got much easier. The early CCDs had, if you had your a million pixels, that was state of the art. I, right. I remember working with collaborators to take out a million pixel CCD to Australia and it was so exciting everyone wanted to use it. Uh, this is the uh, detector for the SkyMapper telescope we have here at ANU. That's right. And this is what, over 300 million pixels. That's right, and now the Vera Rubin Observatory is going up to a few billion pixels. These things just get bigger and bigger and bigger now. So now we have things bigger than photographic plates and 100 times more sensitive, which means you can now search huge areas of the sky digitally to very, very, faint, very right. faint brightnesses. So these will go down routinely to like 22nd, 23rd magnitude, uh, maybe even deeper for the Vera Rubin telescope, That's right. attached to steadily bigger telescopes on better sites. And you don't also have to sit there blinking it with you know this little mirror and trying to look at it visually. You can use computer algorithms now that actually help detect it for you. Yes, so some of these telescopes will easily just uh, observe you know, tens of millions of stars a night, and then you'll take the digital images and you'll automatically compare them with software looking for things that move, rather than you have to look at all 10 million every night and say, oh, that one moved. <laughs> Thank goodness. That's right. <laughs> it's still a lot of tricky software. Yes, that's um, right. And you've been involved in... <laughs> Uh, because other things happen, like satellites go across and fake things. The uh, two images nearby, if the image quality blurs, they may appear like one and then appear as That's two, right. depending where the image quality changes. And we're also looking through the solar system, so things like asteroids also move, but they move differently than these things further out. So there's lots of things changing in the nighttime sky when you're looking at really faint things. But a large amount of work has gone into writing clever software to sort out the interesting things. And they discovered a lot of these Pluto-like things. So we have Uranus and Neptune, Jupiter and Saturn, right? Yes. So these grey things here are the Trojans we talked about That's earlier. Right. They haven't shown the asteroid belt, which is even further in. Yeah. And then there's a bunch of things called centaurs orbiting somewhere between Saturn and Uranus and Neptune. So these are closer than what Pluto is. That's right. And then the blue and white things are the things in roughly Pluto-ish orbits. So they're out beyond Neptune, but not too far out. And they tend to be in similar sorts of orbits. That, there's a lot of them. That's a lot, yeah. I mean, that's not just one or two. These are hundreds of thousands of these things, if not more. Yes, and basically, people are, I mean, it looks like there's lots in certain areas. That's simply because people have looked hard in that area. Yeah. So there are probably many more down here. Just someone did an observing project with a telescope pointing that direction. In fact, we points. do have gaps in, depending on where we can look in the solar system and yeah. geographically. I mean, the worst place is in front of the plane of the galaxy. That's the right. Milky Way, if you look in the middle of the Milky Way, the trouble is there's so many background stars, it's hard to spot yes. them. So it tends to, this gap here and that gap there is probably the Milky Way That's where right. it crosses the plane of the ecliptic. So uh, there are a lot of these things. Uh, and this is now called the Kuiper Belt after and Gerard Kuiper, who predicted it should be there. And so this is kind of like what you were just actually saying earlier with the asteroid belt. This kind of is a whole new thing, like the asteroid belt, just beyond Neptune. That's right. So it's asteroid belt 2.0, <laughs> if you like. Um, and these things are either called Kuiper belt objects. Astronomers love three-letter acronyms, TLAs. So they're often called KBOs. That's so right. Kuiper belt objects. Probably the most common name is trans-Neptunian object or TNOs. And so so if we slip up and say this is a, the new TNO, that's what we mean. It's Kuiper Belt object, part of this asteroid belt 2.0 beyond Neptune. Essentially, yeah, it's all that stuff beyond the orbit of Neptune. And there's a lot of it. There is indeed.